Melodic minor is a beautiful, very important part of the sound of jazz, something you definitely want to have in your vocabulary, but it can be quite difficult to really get it into your ears and into your fingers so that you can use it in your solos. In this video, I'm going to go over a song that's fairly simple that will teach you how to use the three most important melodic minor modes and the best way to learn anything so that you can really use it in your own playing is of course to learn it on a piece of music. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. The song that I'm using in this video is Bernie's tune, that's a straight ahead 32 bar AABA form in the key of D minor with a bridge in B flat major. It's most famous from the recording from Jerry Mulligan with Chet Baker, but it's actually written by a jazz pianist called Bernie Miller, hence Bernie's tune. The minor six and minor major seven chords are what we use for the tonic minor sound. And this is probably the best place to start when you're learning how to use melodic minor, simply because we're using the scale from the root, it's easier to hear and in that way, get into your playing. In this case, we're in the key of D minor. So the melodic minor scale we have is D melodic minor. And a good place to find some things to play would be to check out the diatonic arpeggios. So that's D minor major 7, E minor 7, F major 7 sharp 5, G7, A7, B half diminished, C sharp half diminished, D minor major 7. For this chord you can actually get a lot out of just using the basic diatonic arpeggios which is actually not the case for the two other modes that I'm covering in this video. The arpeggios you can use will be D minor major 7, F major 7 sharp 5 and B half diminished where you want to notice that B half diminished is in fact the same set of notes as D minor 6. Using D minor major 7 in a line could sound something like this. The diatonic arpeggio from the third of the chord F major 7 sharp 5 could be put to use like this. And of course you can use B half diminished in a line like this. The next chord in the song is a B flat 7 and that's the tritone substitution of the dominant of the dominant. So it's a tritone substitution of an E7 that's the dominant of A7. This is a very common way to treat the dominant of the dominant in minor and actually it is this chord that makes it sort of a minor version of a very famous jazz standard in major. But I'm gonna get to that in a little bit. The scale that goes with this chord is F melodic minor. And here it's also best to start with the diatonic arpeggios. So we have F minor major 7, G minor 7, A flat major 7 sharp 5, B flat 7, C7, D half diminished, E half diminished, F minor major 7. The two obvious arpeggios to use on this chord would of course be B flat 7 and D half diminished. The B flat 7 would sound like this. and D half diminished like this. These arpeggios sound great and they really get the sound of the B flat seven across, but they don't really nail the sound of the Lydian dominant because they don't have the sharp 11 in there. But it's pretty easy to create some arpeggios that actually will include a sharp 11. If you start with a B flat seven arpeggio, and then you replace the F with an E, then you get a B flat seven flat five arpeggio. And this is of course really nailing the B flat seven sound, but also really adding that Lydian dominant sound because we have the E in there. If we do the same for the D half diminished, then we of course start with D half diminished and then we take the F, turn that into an E, and then we get this strange arpeggio. But in fact, this is an inversion of an E seven sharp five. And you can create some great lines with these arpeggios. The B flat seven flat five could sound something like this. And putting the E seven sharp five to use could give you something like this. Let's quickly have a look at the structure of the A parts so that you can see why I keep saying that this is the minor version of a famous chord progression in major. The B flat seven is the tritone substitution of the dominant of the dominant. And this is actually more common than having just the dominant of the dominant in minor. So you're more likely to see a B flat seven in D minor than an E seven. And this probably has to do with the fact that the B flat is already a part of the key. So if you look at D natural minor, then B flat is the flat six. 
And if you look at the B flat seven, then all the notes are really already there, except the A flat or the G sharp. That's the only note that's out of the scale or out of the key. And that's why you see this tritone substitution used so often, whether you're looking at a minor blues or many of the standards that are in minor, like Beautiful Love. If you look at the basic structure of the A part of Bernie's tune, then it is tonic, five of five, two five, and then back to the tonic. And if I was to write out that same structure in C major, then I would have C major seven, D seven, D minor seven to G seven, going back to C major seven. And this is of course the A part of Take the A Train or uh, Sudan so Samba or Girl from Ipanema or half of all bossa novas. The connection to take the A train is a little bit stronger because we also have that sharp 11 in the melody on the 5 of 5, even though, of course, in Bernie's tune, the 5 of 5 is a triton substitution, but it is that sound, it is that Lydian dominant sound. In general, Lydian dominants are associated with dominant chords that don't resolve. So that means that we don't have a dominant function in that chord. It's not resolving from A7 to D minor, for instance. But there are a few places where it's quite common. Tritone substitution. Backdoor dominance. and five or five in major. The alter dominant is the final sound that you can put to use on this song. And this is of course something you would use on the dominant of the key, so the A7. And A7 altered is the same as B flat melodic minor. Here I've written out the B flat melodic minor scale with a C sharp instead of the D flat. And that's simply because we're thinking about an A7 chord, we're thinking about A altered. So the C sharp makes a little bit more sense, even though that of course was going to give us a lot of other inharmonic problems, but we're gonna have those no matter how we look at it. The diatonic chords for this scale would be B flat minor major seven, C minor seven, C sharp minor seven sharp five, E flat seven, F7, G half diminished, A half diminished, B flat minor major seven. Here, the two arpeggios that are going to give you sort of the core sound of the chord, which would be G and C sharp, together with some alterations, would be G half diminished and E flat seven. G half diminished would be, of course, the G and the C sharp or D flat, and then a B flat, which is a flat nine, and an F, which is a flat 13. The E flat seven would be again G and C sharp, and then we get E flat, which is a flat five, and B flat, which is a flat nine. Using G half diminished could sound something like this. And the E flat seven can give you a line like this one. Notice that it's a little bit easier to use the G half diminished arpeggio because that's less harsh Hush for fen. The G half diminished is a little bit easier to use because it's less harsh than the E flat seven. The inclusion of the flat five, so simply just the E flat, is actually pretty harsh and a little bit difficult to use when you're improvising over an A7 altered. With the tonic minor and Lydian dominant sounds, then there are a lot of songs where you can find clear examples of that being used in the melody of the song. This is not really the case with the altered dominant because most of the time when you come across a dominant, especially in a minor key, then the sound that you have on that dominant is going to be taken from harmonic minor. So that's going to be sort of the A7 out of D harmonic minor. And that's actually also the case with Bernie's tune. And you can see this because in the melody on the A7, we have an A7 arpeggio. And the A7 arpeggio has the note E in there, and that's not a part of the A7 altered scale. So in that way, we're using a different sound. We're actually changing the harmony a little bit when we're using the altered scale on a dominant. But in jazz, we do it all the time. So just go right ahead. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, then the best place to start learning melodic minor is to work with the tonic minor sound. And if you wanna dig deeper into that, learn how to create some solid lines that you can add to your own vocabulary, then check out this video where I really explore some of the different things that are in the scale and how you use them. Where do you use melodic minor the most? 